Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial here on this filmmaking behind the scenes channel. So if you've been following along with the channel for some time, you know I do a lot of behind the scenes tutorials here for my main channel CK Productions. And this is a kind of a sneak peek you guys are getting into a video coming out this summer. I'm not going to speak too much on the details of it. You probably could figure it out from the context if you follow the, uh, the CK Productions channel. But today we're going to be doing kind of a unique tutorial here. We're going to be going over how to make Master Hand from the Super Smash Brothers series and do some Master Hand visual effects in real life here. So there's multiple ways you can go about doing this. And this is, you know, if you want to do kind of a Smash Brothers in real life video, you want Master Hand to be in your video. We've actually done this a couple times in the past, but we kind of perfected the way to kind of do it now. And I'm going to share it with you guys. And I'm actually going to even have the clip of this in the description below if you guys want to follow along as well. So for the production of this VFX shot here, you're going to want to think about what you're going to need on set here. Obviously, you're going to need some kind of green screen or a blue screen for the background to key out everything. But something that you're also going to need is obviously the white glove on here. But you're also going to need, you're going to need some kind of solid colored sleeve here to go along with the blue, with the, with the white glove here. And... Normally when you think about it, you would think, why did I go choose to go with a red sleeve, a red suit here? Well, why didn't I just go with the blue one to match the blue? That's what I did for um, one of the effects that we did for this in the past. However, at the time of filming this, I thought that we had that blue morph suit that I used for that. I didn't actually have that, so I found kind of the, the next best thing here. It doesn't necessarily matter if it matches the background as long as it's something that's solid color and is relatively the same tone of that color throughout the, the outfit that you're wearing here. And it's far from the white tones that you're recording with here. And if you look at see how the lighting is, how the white balance is set up is on the hand itself, there aren't any blue or red tones involved in it. So we shouldn't have a problem here. So. It's just going to be a couple extra steps because we have two different uh, colors here, but that's not a problem. First of all, our first step is going to be, you guys know what it is, going to jump to our key light. All right, so we got our key light added here. So now let's go with our color dropper, grab the blue and get rid of the blue here. And so if you follow any of my key light tutorials before, you know kind of the steps here that I like to use in key light. Let's go ahead and jump through those steps, turn it on to combine matte here and open the screen mat here. And this is the easiest way to make sure that we get rid of all the blue tones here. Cause if you look at it this way, you don't always, you know, it's not really obvious that all the blue isn't actually gone here. But if you throw it onto uh, this combined mat here, you're gonna see what actually isn't taken care of here. So go on to clip black and clip black is going to get rid of all those blue tones in the background there. And we're going to pull that like literally as far as we can until nothing is gone in the back. You want to be a little careful because losing a little bit of this stuff here in the hand. We don't want to lose that. So let's bring the clip white down a little bit and that'll deposit a little bit more into that area there to fill that in. So now if we uh, go ahead and play that back here, we're going to see that there's no stragglers. There's no stragglers here in the, the blues that we've taken out here. So one thing that we can also do is we can kind of, you know, refine the edges a little bit. And so it's not so jaggedy here. We can screen soften those a little bit more. And like I always like to do, just shrink them just a little bit, just to make sure that there's no rim on the edges of, the, of any blue that's still there. Okay, so there's our first step here now. We're gonna do something, you know, a little unorthodox. I don't always do it a lot of clips. We're gonna add another key light and we're gonna uh, go and take an eyedropper of the red here. And we're gonna get rid of the red. So this one might not be as easy of a key as the other one. We're gonna go and put it on combine mat again and crush it, this, crush this clip black until all those red tones are gone. And, we're seeing we're also getting some of the residue here on the hand. So we push the clip white there until that's gone. And we want to just prioritize, you know, maybe we can push this a little bit farther or this a little farther to get rid of some of here, but we don't necessarily need to get rid of all of the stuff that's kind of floating in this area here. We want to just prioritize the stuff that's around 
the hand because we can do a little extra masking and stuff to help offset there. Basically what we want to do is we don't want there to be too many like artifacting and too many jaggedness and too many much like kind of craziness going around around the head. We want it to be smooth. So we're going to smooth that out again here. And notice what happened when we did that. When we did that smoothing here, it kind of revealed some more of this these red pixels that were still floating here. That's why this combined mat is really, really useful. And key light is just such a useful key here in After Effects. Like I wouldn't use anything else. So I think we can get rid of this stuff with just a little bit of that shrink there and see, boom, the edges there are gone. And it's gonna ensure we don't have any edges around the, the hand itself here. So let's go ahead and look, see how it looks like. Cool, so the hand is pretty much all isolated now. And what we have to do is simply just make a mask around this guy and isolate it from the rest of the stuff that's kind of floating around here. This is the like the zippers and stuff from the shirt I was wearing. And we're gonna isolate it here. And so obviously what we're gonna have to do is we're going to want to animate this mask to go along where master hand is going so and making sure we're not keeping any of this these kind of you know residue these little leftover pixels here into the mask so putting it on a uh, none mode here is a good way to just go through and make sure that you're isolating everything and even though it's not masked yet we'll be able to turn that back to add before we're done with the effect so do a little bit of mask animation like pulling it down so the mask follows it. Follow it around to where it's going. And now we can go ahead and we can do add. And there we go. We have our isolated hand here. Can kind of pull it up a little bit. And that's what our effect looks like. So one little other thing we can talk about here is we're gonna talk about kind of perspective and you want to think about if you're doing kind of a master hand effect, are you doing any type of effect that has kind of an isolated, you know, thing on the green screen? You want to think about perspective. What, what's happening with the hand here is actually, you know, flying from off screen and appearing into the shot and then flying onto a platform. So what I think we're going to want to do here is actually make it look like it's flying from off screen because I didn't, I didn't really I could have, you know, moved my hand up from the bottom and, and done it like that, but I anticipated that I was going to, you know, do it more with animation here. So maybe I have keyframe where it hits the top of the, of its arc here, and we can move backwards and move the position down. You can see it float up and then land down on what presumably will be a platform and see it floating up. One thing we're gonna to wanna to do here is what we always do when we're doing key frames. One, since this is a uh, practical effect here, I think we're gonna put uh, some motion blur on it to simulate the actual motion blur that'd be in real life. And we're gonna go and we're gonna ease these keyframes here. So when it comes up, it eases more into that top part instead of just, you know, when we don't have it, it just hits the top and stays. So we're gonna do that. So it looks a little more natural. And there you go, that's our isolated master hand clip here. We can use this for anything you want. And if you guys are using this, feel free to use that for whatever you want. And if you want to show me or whatever, uh, send me a clip or an Instagram or something. I'd be happy to see what you guys make with this. Give you guys a little bit of insider knowledge here on what's going on with this master hand. This is the actual clip that that master hand thing is from. And in this composition we have you know, it's kind of a, this is sort of a still a work in progress here. What's going to happen here is there's going to be a character that fights this master hand. And that's kind of, it gives you an idea of what the sort of effect that you can do with something like this. And when you guys are doing VFX, I encourage you guys to be creative, try new things. If you have a vision, just go ahead and get it. With that, I hope you guys have a nice week and I'll see you guys next time. Bye everyone.